What's going on, YouTube? You're back with Shades, and we're continuing our Let's Play of Katawa Shoujo. Last time we left off, we have started a new game. We are now going to attempt to accomplish the Lily route, and um, I am going through the beginning again because I have no idea what's going to be different, because I am looking up a walkthrough to specifically get to Lily's route, since um, last time, I, I don't know which, since last time my choices to get to the Emmy route were completely random and based on what I would do. So now, I'm just going to click click things for now and see what happens i'm and well i'm gonna use a walkthrough to get through here so anyway hello is anyone home hello is anyone home i'm not her, her. from inside i hear a few movements and then clicking of way more locks than i thought these doors had after a moment the door squeaks open a bespectacled boy is standing in the doorway he's looking at me very intently through his extremely thick glasses who is it Blind? No, at least not completely. Why else would he have glasses if he was? He leans closer to me until our noses are almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. His sound a kai. I'm moving to the room next room. Thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization, and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand down in a smiling greeting almost straight to my diaphragm. Oh, sup dude, the name's Kenji. Uh, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and a vehement, vehement welcome. There were some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. Your parents? You sure? Because it could have been any, any, some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. His out of place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of a way to some way to respond. I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders making and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, he said. Me, I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope I'm. I hope not smart. He squints, his eyes lean in closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, doesn't matter. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 119. Bleak beige walls, white linen, a desk made of some tip type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room, impersonal, like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting on the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems that there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. A note is pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts. Hi. Hi, he chan We've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said if these don't fit, you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mammy Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hoped I would have. There would be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie down on the bed, feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something. I have nothing with me. I wonder if there's the hosp if one of the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whatever I had nothing to do. That's not a bad habit to have. Reading's fun. <laughs> the restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the entire day today too. I still am, I think. Damn, I have to distract myself somehow, so I won't, I won't be on this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now... PILLS! PILLS HERE! The bottle of medication is neatly arranged on my night, night table catching my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside, and then read the glued on pharmacy label. Isadokai, two tablets daily to stay alive. It doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. It's kinda twisted having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With a sigh, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain, and after that I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. And then fall asleep. It doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly comfortable, warm and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Soon the lighter shade of darkness, that is the ceiling, looks like every other ceiling does at night, and it becomes the one thing I recognize anymore. The only thing I recognize. Jesus. The night, be the night beckons me to sleep, and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew.
I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I had forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that indeed, it is me who is supposed to be the one living here. My bag's on the floor, my new school book's on the desk. My numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating, until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, pop, the t pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink on from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting a new school uniform feels like dressing someone, in new, some, dressing someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth that gets my back is a good one. A natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should, and not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things, too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday, Misha's constant laughter, and she's in a sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal, but I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what pass for normal around here. Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe there are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the question remains on my mind, so I decide to ask Shizune about, what, where we, about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. She crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so the top is perfect and evenly flat. Uh, sorry, sorry, Shichan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm, that is a good question, Hee-chan. My first thought is, is that she means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha doesn't prove me right. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost everyone in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So, you actually transferred in a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. <laughs> I don't know, Hee-chan. The truth is a local event. So I'm not, and I'm not from this area, so... She starts signing signings desperately to Shizune, asking for her to, ba to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grandiose flourish and starts gr signing hard and heavy. Huh? Oh. Who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she shout shouts Shizune's words out at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud. I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. Human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals and beliefs behind a festival will inevitably change with time. Now it's about delicious fried food and the music little games and you play to win prizes. Hee. <laughs> The teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp and quickly quiets down. Shizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though brushing it off without a care. We are in the middle of class and I should, and should start working. That's right, Shichan. What? That's right. Shichan, are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? Oh no, the face! <laughs> it's the face! It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchanged between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that very does that every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shisune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a girl with long dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently toward the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seems to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher who was looking at, a, at the dark-haired girl go. Why doesn't he say anything? Hang on, guys, I have to cut the video real quick. Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me after the girl who left? 
No, nothing. Okay, well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. Not really. Do you want to have lunch together with it? Sure. Yay! <laughs> okay, Hee-chan, perfect. The rest of the class passes on uneventfully. The girl with long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Shizune looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish our work on time. I'm glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. Yes, it is, Hee-chan. Impossible. Really? Really. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so Shizune can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm look used to looking at the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really. Shizune can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through M Misha. Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, at least she's looking at me. This is all very confusing and will take some time to get used to. It's not a contest, but contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. <laughs> Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me, as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest for her. I've never noticed how dark her and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring gaze. Are you sure, Hee-chan? Very sure. Haha, <laughs> you're wrong, Hee-chan, because... I don't want to be the slowest one in class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence in my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. Wahaha. Shizune pushes her glasses up to the bridge of her nose in a matter-of-fact way. I'd argue more, but the bell rings and she quickly gets up and picks up her bag, looking at me expectantly. Oh, excuse me. I almost forgot that I was supposed to have lunch with them. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? <laughs> that's so plain. Okay, let's go. Plain? Well, I guess. At my old school, I liked to eat outside, near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until the end of the, near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there's a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Shizun and Misha pulled me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor eating in a classroom or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had boxed lunches. After we finished eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. So Hee-chan, you wanted to know about the clubs and stuff, right? Right? Right, Hee-chan. Shee-chan. Oh my god. The fact that their nicknames are so damn close, it's like, why? Okay, I guess I need to make sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again, and Misha strains her posture, as if she is about to deliver a speech. Hee-chan, do you have anything you're really interested in? I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually read, just read a lot. Hmm, there's a book club, right, Shichan? Right, but it seems like they have all the members they could possibly have right now. Sorry, Shichan, it's a really popular club. Okay, but more to the point, Shichan, does this mean that you don't have anything already in mind? Not really. Good, great, that's great, Hee-chan, really great. <laughs> Why is it so great? No reason. Well, Hee-chan, other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there's one other thing. Student council. I see, I didn't know the school had a student council. That was a very melodramatic setup, though. Just tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this, because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it. Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion in a manner of speaking. After all, it's Misha who has to voice whatever she says. <laughs> hmm? Right, right. Hee-chan, maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Well, for one, we can hang out every day, Hee-chan. Shichan and I are both in the student council. Actually, Shichan is the president. Hmm. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Shizune and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this with. As of reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. 
Haha, <laughs> of course we're not trying to get you to join just because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to. So you're admitting that. Uh, no, we're admitting nothing. I mean, Hee-chan, of course it'd be nice if you joined and we'd appreciate it. But even without all that, joining student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one school. Yep, it's true, Hee-chan. Besides, don't you want to spend time with us after school, Hee-chan? I can't tell if she's being genuine or if this is just really good acting. Both of them seem to be trying to hard to look their cutest, although they're really pre they're already pretty cute to begin with. Eh, her more than her, in my opinion. But again, personal preference there. I just prefer her appearance than her appearance. I think it's the big hair. Well. So it's settled, then. Welcome to the student council, Hee-chan. What? No, no. Aw, see, she chan of course it wouldn't go so easily. Yup, that's right, though. It would be boring if it went to so if it went that smoothly. Oh well, she chan owes me candy now. You are betting on it? Hey, my life's not a game here. Shizune seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. That's interesting, he chan Let's play a game. That's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, Ichan? If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Aw, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive, and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join student council, right? Yep. Yeah, that isn't my goal. But what this means is that both of you can team up, and I'll be at a clear disadvantage, so I will have to decline. Ichan, I'm very offended. Wait. Sorry about that, guys. I had to take care of something real quick. Ugh. Hee-chan, I'm very offended. Are you saying you don't trust us and then we pull something so... D d disingenuous That makes me sad. Sorry? It's hard to tell where, the, where Shizune's influence ends and Misha's thoughts begin. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. Goddamn. No! How about a game of paper football instead of rich man, poor man? Paper football? Yeah, it's a game they play in America. You should prop make a paper triangle and then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other person makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, he chan And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, she chan she chan Whoa, that means the game really separates the boys from the men. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not gonna play that either. Just the fact that you know it means you probably are surprisingly good at it. Huh, yeah, yeah, that's true. How'd you know, Hee-chan? Shizune frowns at Misha, telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with her attempt to get me to the student council, but I'm a little curious about the, what the student council does here. I've never been on one before, or even known anybody who has a, was a member. So it interests me. I also kind of like Shizune and Misha. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Okay, Hee-chan, how about Risk, the game of world domination? I don't know what that is. It's really fun, Hee-chan. You fight for control of the world with armies and everything. Sounds like Shizune would be good at it. If you want to play, we can after we can after school. Ah, really, Shi-chan? We can just play for fun, Hee-chan. Shi-chan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there's no strings attached. Well, okay. Okay, 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 perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room, then, Hee-chan. Wait, why there? Because, because, that's where we keep the game. Durr, I'm hitting the mute button again. I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's more for show than anything. So in the end, I agree, but only after Shizne to, but only after getting Shizne to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play games with her. Lunch ends, and we go back to class. During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. After school, Shizune and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I'd, but I'd been considering it nevertheless. But I'm oh, considering it nevertheless. I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? This doesn't make you, this doesn't make me feel very uncomfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. What's wrong, Hee Chan? That's right, we're just going to play a game of Risk, remember? 
I don't know, Misha. I don't know, Misha. This seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we set the to play the game, they'll tie me down and torch me until I gr until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's hi very highly unlikely, but still, for some reason, it just seems like that would be so plausible. Getting to the student council room is as simple as turning two corners from where we, from where we started. What? What? That's it? That this makes you guys on being so on top of me seem a little silly. That's not true, Hee-chan. Chi-chan says that when their life is threatened, people have shown that com the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. Life is threatened. Her, her expression on Cheiji, Misha signs something unmusically to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hand behind her back, looking pleased with herself. <laughs> Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that, I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's very plain, sparsely dis it's a <sighs> It's a very plain, sparsely dis decorated room, although it is quite large, maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs and a smaller desk pre prominently placed in the back that is so the the the, 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 the that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras perhaps? Aside from the desk tables and chairs, the one room. Uh, ba, da, ba. I hate when I stutter because every time I do that, I have to stop. Oh, Jesus Christ. The room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves, stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else, in fact. Nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. They could at least put a potted plant in here or something. But the most noticeable thing in this room is that it doesn't have other people. Are we early? No. What do you mean, no? Does it mean nobody else is coming today? Yeah, that's right. Before I manage to ask why that's the case, she's going to clap her hands together very energetically. Hichan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. Okay, okay, okay. Do you know the rules? We can explain to you while we set everything up. While Misha is talking, Shizune takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. I played Risk before. It's pretty fun. Uh, I'm not gonna explain the rules because you can probably find it yourself somewhere. But yeah, the game's pretty fun if you know what you're doing and you know how to take a risk. <laughs> After Misha spends a little too long for her liking, running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. Halfway into the game, when I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. What the hell? Oh. What, did I hit a key or something? Whatever. Hee-chan, Shichan wants you to know that you're taking too long to make a move. Shichan also says that she will let you keep Australia if you enjoy, agree to join the student council. Really? I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. She chan admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator to who, who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. You're so competitive, she's an A. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more ma magnanimous. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who, return, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index finger against her temples as if trying to physically imprint the word in her, into her mem memory. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated sign-in. Uh, wait, please though, slow down, Hee-chan. Um, Hee-chan. Uh, Shichan says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Uh, okay. Those eyes of her shine with, shine with childlike mischief. There's that face again. Damn it. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. You know you won't. Oh, so so far my cho my um, my uh, choices from before are the same one. Are the, seem to work according to the walkthrough. She's either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose though, so I might as well try something different. Maybe if I spread out my forces and try to control more territories, I can recoup, recoup the advantage. 
Shizune seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I could sacrifice to hold my my hold on continents to gain more small countries. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyway. Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a, pump a fist in the air in celebration. I win! I win! Yay! There's no need to translate that, it was pretty clear. Don't look so sad, Hee-chan. You were really getting at your best, and that's what I thought. Sometimes your best isn't just isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. Hee-chan, you attack Iceland and North America at the same time. It's a very daring move. Shichan is impressed. The mark of great people is, how, is that they are daring, and that they can follow through. You're halfway there, isn't it? Isn't great, Hee-chan? That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There's no point to potential if you don't take the first step. And there's no point to that if you don't keep going. I want to see more. You're right, Shichan, but that's so demanding. Shizune leans forward and suddenly looking a lot less playful and more like a serious person I expect her to be from the start. Hee-chan, would you like to join the student council? She really doesn't waste any time, does she? But it's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to something so early. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. But spending time with Shizune and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide for sure. Maybe. I'll get back to you on it. Okay, Hee-chan, but I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. Really? Hee-chan, if you're gonna say that, you're saying that is definitely the truth, and there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know. I guess I should have my revenge for losing at the very least. Shizune smiles in that, in that mischievous way that feels like a twisting knife in the wound of my loss. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Shizune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Shichan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? No thanks, it's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye bye! And that's where I'm ending the episode for this one. Um, going through this again, um, seems to be that... <coughs> my back! <sighs> it seems to be so far that my choice in the beginning seemed very generic. And that it doesn't matter what I choose until I actually meet the people I'm going for. So... We'll see in the future, because I know in the next part we're about to meet Hanako, who is a good friend of Lily's, and the next day we are meeting Lily. Correct? Yes. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me, hit that subscribe button. And you are now exiting the Shadyverse. My name's Shades, and I hope you've enjoyed your day in the shade. See you guys later.